Let him fix it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He is a lawyer in the courtroom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He is a provider. Hallelujah. He is a provider. Hallelujah. He is a way maker. Hallelujah. Just let him fix it. Hallelujah. Just let him fix it. Hallelujah. As he is. The I am, I am, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can you believe that clap that we feel today, clap? He is the I am, the I am, hallelujah. He is, he is the I am, I am, hallelujah. Father, I ask you to bless right now, God, in the name of Jesus, the rest of part of the service, God, the word will go forth. Hallelujah, we surrender over to you our praises, God. I will worship to you, Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus. You come and sue this house right now. As the speaker right now, God, the praises unto you, God. You said the praises go up. Blessings come down. So help us, God, in our actions, God. Hallelujah. Help us, God, in our actions, God, in our movements, God, in the name of Jesus, for you, for your glory, and for your honor. I ask you, God, the best pastor of God's right now, the word will go forth, God. I ask you to touch right now in his body, God, as you're using him as your willing to vessel, God, to fill your people, revive, God. Restore us, God. So I ask you, God, to move right now in this place, God, as we surrender over to you and surrender all, God. Remove us, God, as you get the glory. Let you feel. Fill us, fill us, fill us, fill us with your glory, with your presence, and with your power. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. For your glory, for your glory, hallelujah. For your glory, hallelujah, for your glory. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord, for your glory. Come on, y'all, speak to the Lord. Yes, hallelujah. Everything we need him to be, yes. when we need him to be it. Yes. That's how good God is. Yes. And then you need a friend. He said, "There's a friend who sits closer than a brother." Yes. Amen. Yes. He said, "Is there, is there, is there a need yes. to have? I'm your provider." Yes. Amen. He, when the doctor try to diagnose you with something, God has the power to say, "Not so." Mm -hmm. Amen. He has the power to say, "Not so." He, he is the great. Physician. Yes. Amen. Yes. The doctor is just a doctor or a regular physician. He is the great physician. Yeah. Better than any other. Amen. Yes. You, need a, you, need a, you, need a, you need somebody to talk to. You know, some people, you know, therapy is being, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a proponent of therapy. But the Bible said he is the counselor. Yes. Wonderful yes. counselor. Right? Yes. Wonderful counselor. Yes. You can tell him what you can't tell. The therapist, yeah, right? Yeah. Because he knows it anyway. Yeah, he knows There's only so much you can tell the therapist, right? Let me fix this now. There's only so much the yeah. therapist can do, yeah. right? Yeah. He can do everything. Yeah. Right? He can do anything. Yeah. Amen? Amen. So we don't have to keep anything back from the Father. Yeah. We can tell him our, our deepest secrets, right? Yeah. We can tell him, let me, let me get that microphone. Amen. We can tell them our deepest secrets, right? We can tell them the things that are plaguing our, plaguing our minds. We can share with them because he already knows. And the one thing I love about it is that not only does he know, but he can do something about it. Amen? He can be anything that you need him to be. Amen? That's the God that we serve. Amen? You guys need somebody to fight for you? Yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll fight for you. Yeah. How I many know he'll fight for you? Yes. And then ask David. Yes. Amen. He fought for David. Yeah. Amen. Ask Moses. He fought for Moses. Yeah. Ask Abraham. He fought for Abraham. Yes. We talking about who God was to his people, right? Yes. Ask him. Just search the scriptures. Everything that God was to them, he can be to us. Why? Because he's no respecter of persons. Yes. Yes. Right? He's no respecter of persons. What he did for them. He can do for us. That's why he's there. So that we can learn from. We talked about that last week, right? It's there for us to learn from it. To see who God is. Yes. And to, to trust him in the same way that they did. Yes. Amen? Amen? They weren't perfect and neither are we. No. But God showed up for them. Why? Because he's perfect. Yes. We yes. serve a perfect, Excellent. loving God who cares for us and is with us in everything that we go through. Amen? 
Let me give God praise one more time yeah. for who he is. We thank you, Father, for bringing everything that we need. Thank you for bringing everything that we need. Hallelujah. We thank God for everything that's been said and done thus far. Thank the Lord for using Minister Tina. And she's trying to tell her to let go. She gets so worried about uh, 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 singing the song and all that stuff. She want to practice. You, you can practice all you want. Doesn't matter. Do it unto the Lord. Okay. Amen. Right. When, I, when, I make, when, I, when I when I when I prepare the message, I go over it one time and I say, Lord, have your way. All right. God, you know what I mean? I'm not gonna, I'm not trying to study it mind for mind. You know what I'm saying? I just want to have it in my spirit. You know, I want the Lord to use me to say what He wants me to say. I that. Right? Yes, man. So I, when I'm gonna pray the best, I'm not gonna let me make sure I got this and I'm gonna say this then. No, it's there, I got my notes. I follow the course and then I give the Lord. Give to the Lord. After I'm done, after I'm done, I say, Lord, okay, now you have your way. You, you have your way in me. Yes. Okay. You speak what you want me to speak. And stuff that's down here, if you don't want me to say it, don't don't let me say it. Right? But it's just a guideline. Okay. That's all the song is. You but you want to minister to the Lord from your spirit. We thank God for for using her, amen. Oh, we got amen. 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 Thank everybody for being here. <laughs> thank everybody for being here. Thank you all for pressing your way out. We thank yes. God it's not as cold today yes. as it was yesterday. Amen. Man, it was freezing yesterday. I said, my goodness. But we thank God that it's not as cold. And seeing mom come to the street, I said, oh, I said, that, that's the raise mom. I said, oh, you all bundled up. You had a coffee and everything. I said, well, thank God you had your coffee to keep you warm a little bit while he was on your way, amen. We thank God for pressing her way. It's awesome yeah. to see her, amen. She was here giving her a testimony, telling us all about the things the Lord has done for her, yes. amen. We thank God for everything that He's yes. done. Listen, doesn't matter how small you think it is, right? It is a wonderful thing because somebody is getting getting blessed by what you share. Now you might think it's a small thing, but somebody needs to know that what God did for you. They can do, he can do for them. Yeah, yeah. Right? You don't know what people are believing and trusting God for. And they just need that a word that God is doing something for somebody. That God is still working in the land, right? Because some people don't think that God is still working. He is still working. Mm -hmm. Amen. He's still working. So we need to share everything yes. that he's done for us. Somebody needs to get grocery bill, share that. Yeah. Right? That's a blessing. That's God showing up for you. Whatever it is. You might think it's small, but it's God showing up for you, so share it. Yeah, Amen. Because yeah. somebody needs to hear your testimony. Yeah. Needs to hear what God is doing. Amen. It, it brings encouragement to, to so many people, right? See, yeah, it always boggles my mind. Uh, even as church people, people readily share with the enemies. You know, the devil is busy. They share it easy. But they talk about the bad. They talk about the good. Maybe if you talked about the good, the bad wouldn't seem so bad. Right? I share it all the time. Maybe if you didn't magnify the bad, it wouldn't seem so bad. Right? But we easily focus on the bad. Start focusing on the good. Start talking about what God is doing. Right? Start talking about how he showed up. I promise you, you'll feel a lot better. Yeah. Amen? you feel a lot better. Yeah. And then we just, we just want to give God glory for everything yes. that he's done. We thank the Lord for this day. Yes. Amen? I, I don't know if we share this uh this 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 passing month, but uh, January we celebrate celebrated six years. Yeah. Amen. So I want to make sure we say that. Right. Yeah. Amen. And the reason I wanted to make sure if we're going to do something, we're going to celebrate. Me and Tina had a little disagreement a little while ago. She's like, I've never heard of nobody celebrating the anniversary after the fact. I said, you just people celebrate their anniversary on their anniversary, before their anniversary, after their anniversary. As long as you celebrate, it don't matter, right? Um, but the reason I wanted to be mindful to, to, to mention that today is because we were at home getting ourselves together and I turn on different uh, uh, church services sometimes uh, when we're preparing and today I turned on Elevation uh, Church uh, Pastor Steve and they were celebrating, celebrating their 17th yeah. year, right? So I said, oh yeah, I gotta make sure that we mention that you know the Lord has brought us six years, right? Yeah. Um, and I was just mindful that, that that was there was a point when they were celebrating their six year, right? When it didn't look like what it looked like now, right? When it wasn't big and they had churches all over the place and thousands thousands of people tuning in. It was a time when they celebrated six years, but nobody knew who they were, right? Just like us. But all we gotta do is remain faithful. Keep on doing what God has told us to do. Amen. And we're gonna get to 17 years one day. 
And then go look back and say, man, remember when we were in that little building on 219 Market Street? But look what the Lord has done. Amen. Amen. So let's, let's continue to be faithful. Let's continue to give God the praises yes. for where he has, uh, has us now, but also where he's taking us. Amen. Amen. And, and mom even said, mom said, we got to go to this church. I said, yes, we do. And she came in preaching this morning. Yeah. Amen. She came in preaching. So I just thank God for that. Amen. Well, let's go into the word. Amen. Today, we are going to bring a close to our series. Amen. Amen. We're going to bring a close to our series. Our series we've been in since the beginning of the year. Continue to go with the flow, right? I'm not going to go into all what that means because you guys know by now what that means. Amen. Uh, but for those watching, for the first time, I'll just give a little bit of it, right? Uh, continue to go with the flow is the word I believe the Lord gave me for my personal life and for household of faith church, right? Uh, continue to go with the flow means continue to walk in faith, continue to walk in love, continue to walk in obedience, and continue to walk in worship. These are the things that the Lord wants me to continue to do and want us as a, as a household, uh, a family of believers, a community of believers to continue to walk in, amen, this year. To walk in faith, continue to walk in faith, continue to walk in love, continue to walk in obedience, continue to walk in worship, right? We talked about why we want to walk in faith. We talked about that because uh, it's not always easy to walk in faith, right? When, when things don't go the way you plan them to go, right? When things don't go the way that you believe in the Lord to go, it's, it's easy to throw away your faith. Right? It's easy to say, I'm not even going to believe anymore. But the Lord said, continue to believe me. Why? Because what I spoke to you, what I showed you, I'm going to do. Yes, it's true. Some things take time. Right? But the Lord is working. And he wants us to continue to believe him. Right? He said, don't cast away your faith. Don't throw away your confidence. Why? Because it has great reward. The reward is when you receive what you believe in the Lord for the other side of that is if you throw away your faith, there is no reward coming because you threw it away. So he says, don't throw away your confidence. Don't throw away your faith. Keep believing me because I have plans to do what I've spoken. Scripture comes to my mind. He said, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Yes. Not one single thing is too hard for the Lord. Amen. Yes. He said, if I spoke it, yes, I'm going to do it. Yes. Amen. I had a friend. I think I said this before. Uh, he, he, had a, he made a, a little chant for his church. Said, you never should have shown me. You never should have shown me. See, if you didn't show me, I wouldn't believe you. But now that you show me, you've got to do it. Yeah. Amen? It's the same thing. Lord, you never should have spoken to me. You never should have shown me. But now that you did, you are obligated to do it. Amen? Yes. And I mean, I'm going to believe you until you do. Yeah. He said, there's nothing too hard for me. And then he said, continue to walk in love. Right? We saw why we need to walk in love. Because I, as, I, as the scripture showed us, Jesus said uh, because of the overwhelming uh, amount of sin growing in the land. Right? And he said people, believers, those of us who are called to walk in love will, will be tempted to stop operating and stop walking in love. Because of the things that we're seeing happening. Right? Because of the overwhelming amount of sin. We are tempted to stop loving but the Lord said no. You, you are the ones who are called to love. If the ones who are called to love stop loving, then who's going to love? He said, uh, in the word, the word of God said, that's how they know us, right? By our love for one another. Not by how many scriptures you quote, right? Not, not, not by how big your Bible is. Not how, 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 how highlighted it is. How, how, how many uh, scriptures you got highlighted in your Bible. No, he says, by your love. By the love that you show. That's how they're going to know me, yeah. right? And the scripture said that it's the goodness of the Lord that leads people to repentance. Think about that. It's his, his love that draws them. It's his goodness that draws us. So we have to continue to walk in love because that's how they want to be drawn to the Lord through us. Amen? Amen. So the Bible says continue to walk in love. And then he encourages us to continue to be obedient. Why? He said because my words are life yeah. to you. Jesus said what? Man does not live by bread alone but by what? Every word that comes out of the mouth of God. It's just not, it's not the, uh, the, 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 the eggs, the toast, uh, the potatoes, the fried onions that you eat this morning. <laughs> I'm saying that to Brother Tere. If you get it, you have to walk and tell me you have to stone on it. Amen. <laughs> but but it's, it's not just by that that we live. Yes. Right? It's by the word of the Lord to us that we live by. Yes. And when we're obedient to that, 
He is leading us to the life that he has for us. Right? So we want to follow through what the Lord is speaking to us. And I said last week that we want to obey the written word of God because it speaks to us the same thing. Yeah. But we also want to speak, we also want to obey the word the Lord speaks to our spirits. Amen? There are things that the Lord speaks to me that he doesn't speak to you. There are things that the Lord speaks to you that he doesn't speak to, speak to me. Mm -hmm. Right? Those are the personal words of the Lord to us. But we are to obey, obey them the same. Amen? Because again, they are bringing us to what? The life that the Lord has for us. Amen? Well, today we are closing with worship, right? We want to continue in our worship. And I'm going to get hit of myself. What did I say worship does? Worship aligns our focus, right? Problems are going to come in our life. Situations are going to happen in our life, right? And as I said earlier, when we focus on the problems, when we focus on the situation, we magnify them, right? And they look, they look insurmountable. They look as though we will never overcome them. But worship realigns our focus. Yeah. Worship redirects our focus to God. And we see that God is able to do anything. Amen. We see that God is able to handle both situation and problem. Amen. So that's what worship does. Worship takes our eyes off the problem and puts them on God. Yeah. Worship puts God in, not that he ever leaves his right place, right? But worship puts God in his rightful place in our perspective. Yes. It puts him first and foremost over yes. everything. So that's why the Father wants us to continue in worship as well. Because as we go through this year, as we continue to go on through life, things are going to happen. But we got to keep God where he's supposed to be. Yes. First and foremost, able to bring us out of everything, able to take us through everything. Amen. So today we're going to be talking about continuing in worship. And I thought about it. In, in 2022, right, we were believing God. We were walking in faith with the help of the Holy Spirit. We were walking in love. Again, with the help of the Holy Spirit, we were uh, trying to be obedient to everything the Lord has spoke to us. And we worshiped our way through 2022 and all that came with it, right? And as I was seeking the Lord for a word, as we came into 2023, he said, I want you to keep doing the same thing that you did this year. And I shared earlier with us uh, in, this, in this series that, you know, oftentimes when we come into a new year, we make resolutions, right? We, we make new goals. And I shared that the Lord said, well, what about the goals that you had that didn't come to fruition? You just want to throw them away? <laughs> what about the things you were believing me for that didn't manifest? You just want to throw them away? He said, no, continue to believe me for them. Right? Continue to walk in faith. Continue to walk in love. Obedience and worship because I'm not done. Yes. That's how this series has come about. Right? He wants us to continue to persist is what continue means. To continue to persist in faith because without faith, we can't please him. Yeah. Right? Without faith, we can't please him. That's why we got to continue to walk in faith. We got to continue to walk in love. Because what? Our faith works by our love. Right? It all goes together. He wants us to obey because to obey is what? True faith. If you obey, that means you really believe God. Right? And then it all comes together with worship. Because walking in faith and walking in love and walking in obedience, that's really worship. Yeah. It's not just us raising our hands here and singing songs. No, it's living your life as yeah. a the Lord. That's worship. Yeah. Amen? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Amen? Amen? Our key scripture for our time together is John 4, 23 and 24. John chapter 4, verse 23 and verse 24. Amen? It says this, But the hour is coming, and is now here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. Verse 24, God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. We're talking about continuing in worship, and my topic is, it's what God is looking for. Continuing in worship because it's what, it's what God is Looking for, and I'm going to try to get to the point today. I was looking, I was looking, looking at some of the services 
uh, for the since we've been in service in this new year. And I didn't realize I was up here so long. I was killing y'all. I think we supposed, we, supposed to, we supposed to be done at 1.30. I think we're going to get done at 2.30. So I'm going to try to get to the point today. Amen? But I was just thinking about it. I've been really trying. I hope y'all get it. I've been really trying to give y'all some substance. Yeah. Right? Something that we could, something that, that carry us through our weeks. Right? Something that carry us through our months. I mean, I watch a lot of church services, and I'm like, you ain't said nothing. If I went to your church, and I'm in the church, it's full. <laughs> church back. I'm like, man, if it's full. That's all I got to do. It's good to give a whole bunch of cliches and the church be full. But I be trying to give us some substance. I'm a big dude. You can't just give me a plate with, 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 with a little bit of, you know, we took dad to harvest one time. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Yo, we took dad to harvest Rusty Rock for Father's Day. And when they bought that plate, he looked at the plate, he looked at us. <laughs> He looked at the plate. He looked at us. He was like, this is, this is, this is a pretty plate, but what else am supposed to do with this? Right? I mean, it was nice. He had a little bit of vegetables, a little bit of blue, probably four ounce serve with a meat or something like that. Little starch. That was like, what am I supposed to do with this? That's how I am. Like, I need, I need a, 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 a hearty plate. That's how we should be when it comes to the Word of God. We can't live off cliches. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. It's true. Yeah. But you need to know something about, about, about the word, right? Because the enemy gonna come back at you. He's gonna, he gonna throw the fiery darts, as the Bible said, right? He's gonna throw fiery darts at your mind, fiery darts at your, at your, at your heart. Yeah. So you gotta know what the word is. The word says about the Lord, right? So that you can make it through. So I'm trying to give us some substance. So that's why I, I'm up here trying to trying to give you something that's that's gonna help you get through and let you know that God is with you and for you. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, so let's cut to the chase. Our, our key scripture, right, it tells us plainly what God is searching for, right? It tells us the kind of people that God is searching for, the kind of believer that God is looking for. We don't have to figure it out. It tells us plainly. It says God is looking for worshipers. He's looking for worshipers. He's looking for true worshipers. Amen? Amen. And this is what I, I, I think. If, if God is looking for true worshipers, right? If that's what God is looking for, then I think that's what we should try to be, right? If, if, if God is looking for true worshipers, then that's what we should try to be. Amen, you agree? So, so, so as we close this series, right, I, I want to help us, I want to encourage us, I want to push us, I want to inspire us and motivate us all to worship, to continue to worship, to become true worshipers, right? And I'm going to tell us what true worshipers are, what true worshipers do, who a true worshiper is, right? I'm going to do that um, by incorporating the five W's and the H. Y'all know what that is, right? The five W's and the H. The who, what, when, where, how. I mean, who, what, when, where, why, and how, right? So we're going to, we're going to look at who the true worshiper is, right? Or who the true worshiper should be. Then we're going to look at what makes a true worshiper. After that, we're going to look at we're going to look at when and where the true worshiper worships. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we're going to look at why they worship and how they worship and how worship works for them. Amen. The who, what, when, where, why, and how. These these as I was uh, trying to prepare this message. It said that these are the basic questions, the basic questions that you should ask concerning anything. That, that gives you the, all the information that you need concerning the subject, concerning the person, whatever uh, you need, uh, these are the questions that you should ask, right? Who, what, when, where, why, and how, right? So, who is the true worshiper or who should be the true worshiper? Easy question. Easy answer. You, me, and every believer. You, me, and every believer should be yes. a true worshiper. Romans 12, 1. Romans 12, 1, a very known verse by the Apostle Paul. He says this. I'm reading from the NIV. He said, I therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Yes. 
In this verse, the Apostle Paul is talking to believers. He's not talking to unsaved people. He's talking to the church. The church at Rome, to be more specific. How can I say that? Because he says brothers and sisters. We love unsaved folk, unsaved family members, but they are not brothers and sisters in the family of the Lord. Not until they're saved. Amen. So he's talking to believers. Every believer should be striving, should be striving to be a true worshiper. This is what the, Paul, the Apostle Paul says. He says the reason every believer should be striving to be a true worshiper is because of all that God has done. Because of the mercy he has shown. He says, therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy. He said, I urge you in view of God's mercy. He says, therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy. Every word in the Bible matters. Therefore. He said, therefore. Therefore is a word that links what came before it to what comes after it. Therefore is a word that links what comes before it to what comes after it. Mm -hmm. For 11 chapters, because Paul says this in, in Romans 12, 1, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to know what he's talking about, because remember, therefore is a word that links what, be, what comes before it to what, to what comes after it. For 11 chapters in the book of Romans, the Apostle Paul is talking to them about the mercies of God. Mm -hmm. For 11 chapters in the book of Rome, Romans, he is talking to them about all the things that God has done for believers. Mm -hmm. Right? These are the things that he considers the mercies of God. The things that we don't necessarily deserve, but God has done for us. Not just us, but every believer. Right? He, this is what he covers for the, in the 11 chapters. He begins... Romans, by, make, by making it known that every person, everyone, was bound under sin. Right? That's how he begins, Romans. And then he makes it known that justification only comes through the propitiation or the appeasing act of Jesus Christ. Right? That's what he covers. After that, he makes it known that you are justified by faith. By placing your faith in Jesus Christ, that is what justifies you and frees you from sin. Amen? It's not by works, but it's by placing your faith in Jesus. Amen? After that, he makes it known again that everybody was under sin, under the sin because of what Adam and Eve did. But then he says, but because of what Christ, did, Christ has done, we are made alive in him. Right? And then he says, he makes it known in the book of Romans that when you place your faith in Jesus Christ, in God's eyes, you die when Christ died. Mm -hmm. Right? The old you die when Christ died when you place your faith in him. And then you're being resurrected a new yes. believer. A new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen? Then he says that the law, the law is no longer, he had to tell these people in Romans because there were still people trying to live by the law. So then he covers in Romans, he said, listen, when you, when you place your faith in Jesus Christ, the law is no longer your regulating principle. That's not what you live by. You no longer live according to the law. You are now, now you are able to live by the law of the Spirit and life in Christ Jesus, not the written letter of the law. Right? He covers that in the book of Romans. And then he, he makes them know that sanctification, God, God is sanctifying you through his Holy Spirit that is inside of you. I'm, I'm just sharing with you what Paul covers in the book of Romans that he considers the mercies of God. Right? And then he says this. He comes in and he says, he starts talking about the love of God. How God has shed his love abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And then he says this. Know this, that nothing can separate you from God. Amen. Nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And then he starts talking about can, can, can life separate you, the things that, that come upon us in life. He says no. He says can death separate you? He yeah. says no. He starts talking about the polar opposites that happen to us and lets us know that nothing, or lets them know and lets us know through them that nothing can separate you 
from the love of God. We still need to know that today. Yeah. That no matter what happens, no matter what doesn't happen, no matter, no matter who comes, no matter who goes, none of it separates you Nothing. from the love of God. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. That, that's what he covers in the book of Romans. And then he, he makes it known that Gentiles and Jewish people are now one. God takes the two, makes them one, and we all become together the body of Christ. Amen? He said, he makes it known that the Gentiles have been incorporated into God's plans for Israel. Then he covers the sovereignty of God, that God is sovereign in all that he does. Then he, then he talks about God's future plans for Israel, that even though the believer has been engrafted in, that God is still not done with Israel. He's still going to deal with them and bring them in. Amen? But, but all those things that he covered in the book of Romans for those 11 chapters, this is what Paul is talking about as the mercies of God to us. And then he says, therefore, meaning, based upon all that I share with you for these 11 chapters, right? All that I share with you, I'm urging you in light of that, in light of the mercy of God to you to, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. He said, I'm urging you to offer your entire selves as a living sacrifice to God. Why? Because this is, the, this is your true and proper form of worship. What he was saying was, it's the least that you can do. Now let's make it plain to us. Just, just for a moment, just glimpse back over your life. Even before you knew God, right? Even before he saved you and the things that you were spared from, that was God. Yeah. Yeah. When you didn't know him, he was still looking out for you. Accidents. Bullets flying. Speaking to your heart to leave before something happened. God. Yeah. These are the mercies of God to us. Making a way for you when there seemed like there was no way. Bad diagnosis. All these things are the mercies of God to us. So therefore, in light of God's mercies to us, we should offer ourselves, our entire lives, as living sacrifice to him. Why? Because that's the least that we can do. That is our proper and true worship. That's what Paul was saying to them. And saying to us, every believer is to be a true worshiper because of the mercies of God to us. That's why we really worship him. Because he's been so good to us when we didn't deserve it. Even when we didn't even know he was doing it. That's why he deserves our worship. Amen? So now, what, what makes a true worshiper? Still in Romans chapter 12, now at verse 2, it continues on and says this. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Because of the mercies of God, because of the compassion and forgiveness shown to us by him, we offer ourselves to him. Amen? It's the least that we can do. It's the least that we can do to give ourselves to him. Why? Because he gave himself to us. Right? Now, after we offer ourselves to him, after we give ourselves to him, then we're supposed to allow him to transform us. Yes. Amen? Yes. We're supposed to allow him to make us and mold us into who he knows we are. Amen? Amen. We allow him to make us. This is what transformation means. It means that we allow him to make a dramatic change in our form. We, we allow him to make a, a dramatic change in our appearance, right? In our character, yeah. right? God is doing something in every part of us, mm -hmm. right? It's not, it's not just a spiritual thing. Although he's working on our spirit, but he wants to work on your outside too. Right? And not only does he want to work on your outside, he wants to work on your character, right? And we're supposed to allow him to do it. Right? He does that by renewing our mind. He does that by changing the way that we think. 
right? He takes us from thinking according to the world. That's why I said do not conform yeah. to the pattern of the world. Be transformed. Let God change the way that you think. Yeah. Right? Let him change. He's doing it, right? He does that by changing the way that we think. Now, um, it says we are no longer to conform. That means we're no longer to go with the way of the world. Right? We no longer to go with to go along with the ways of the world system. Right? But what God is encouraging us to do in this series is to go with his flow. Right? To conform means to go with the flow of the, the, the national thing, the, the national flow of the way things are going. But he said be transformed, which means to stop and allow him to make you over in a new way, right? That's what he's been doing us, encouraging us to do in this series, to go with his flow. Amen. So, so in our mind, right? In our mind, worship is raising our hands and singing songs, right? That's not bad. But that is an extension of worship. Us coming in here, raising our hands and singing is an extension of worship. How can I say it's an extension? Because true worship is a surrendered life, right? True worship is your life being surrendered to God, right? True worship is letting God change you. That's why it says, be transformed. We're supposed to allow God. We're not supposed to resist Him yeah. changing us. We're supposed to allow Him yeah. to change us, to yeah. make us over, and to mold us anew, yeah. right? He first does that by changing our mind, and after He changes our mind, then everything else follows suit, right? He changes our mind, and then everything else follows suit. So when our life is surrendered to God, and he begins to change our mind, and everything follows suit, then when we come in here, raising our hands and singing a song, it's easy. Because it's an extension of, of worship. That makes sense, right? So a, a true worshiper is one who has offered themselves to God in view of his mercies. Offered themselves to God because of the things that he has done for them and is still doing, yeah. right? And then they allow God to transform them into his image. That's all God is trying to do. Yes. He's he not trying to hurt us when he's saying, you no know, longer can think like that, you no know, longer can do that. He's not trying to hurt us. He's trying to make us like him. Yeah. Amen? He's trying to make us like him. It's all good, man. <laughs> Listen, it's all good. It's all good. Um, Realize this, because we're talking about worship. It's an, it's, an, it's an act of worship to let God grow us spiritually. We don't think about that. That's worship. Letting God grow you is an act of worship. Right? It's all good. It's all good. Letting God grow you is an act of worship. We don't, we don't take it as such, but do you realize that you stopping God from doing what he's trying to do in you is denying him? He's trying to grow you, but you keep looking at yourself and saying, I can't go there. I'm not this, I'm not that. You are, as you are stopping God from doing what he wants to do in you. Yeah, it's, so it's an act of worship to let God grow you. Again, it's not just raising your hand and singing a song. It's an act of worship to say, Lord, make me and mold me yeah. into who you already know, who you have already made me to be in you. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Listen, it's, it's an act of worship to let God grow you. God does not want you to stay the same. No, he doesn't. He don't want us to stay the same. He gets no glory out of us shrinking back and saying, I'm just going to stay here. Yeah. That doesn't bring glory to God. Think about the, the parable of the talents in a whole different light, right? God gave, well, Jesus tells a parable about a man giving his servants different amounts of talents, right? Because he was going away on a long journey. And when he said, and he said, well, he expected that when he came back, all of them were going to take what he gave them and, and, and grow it, right? Well, we got, you know, he gave one five, uh, I believe he gave one two, and I think he gave one one. Well, the one he gave five, doubled it, right? The one he gave two, doubled it. The one he gave one said, uh, I know that you're a strict person, and uh, I just took uh, what you gave me and hid it in the ground. So, so here's what you gave me. The master was displeased with that servant because he didn't give it to him to just stay the same. He said, grow this for me. 
You know, you know the challenge is you. God doesn't expect you to stay the same. He expects that 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 what he he has put inside of us, right? The gifts and the talents, even the things that we don't know about, that we dig those things up and grow in those things. He doesn't want us to stay the same. No. He gets no glory. He gets no honor out of that. He gets glory and honor out of us growing and, and, and maturing in the things that he's put inside of us. Amen? So God, worship is letting God grow you spiritually. Watch this. And this is an act of worship to let God progress you mentally. Learning is, learning is of God. He, he don't want us to be stupid. He said my people perish because of what? Lack of knowledge. If anybody should be learning, it should be us. Why? Because we have the Holy Spirit who yeah. can teach us all things. That's worship to God. To let him grow you mentally. For us to have an attitude that I don't need to learn nothing, that's not a God. I'm trying to show you. Worship, is, worship goes beyond yeah. what we just uh, think it is. Yeah. Singing songs and raising hands. No, worship is how we live our lives unto the Father. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Worship is us taking care of ourselves physically. God gets no glory out of, and I know we have, some of us have issues, right? Things happen, right? I want to make sure that, but God gets no glory out of us limping and, and looking uh, 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 like we shouldn't. I'll say it that way. I, I want to be careful how I say things. But we need to understand that if we want to declare that God is a healer, we got to be healed, right? Yeah. That worship is it's, it's a form of worship to for us to take care of ourselves physically. Amen? Mm -hmm. I, 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 I can stay there for a minute, but I'm going to move on because I'm going to get to the point, right? But what I'm trying to get us to see is that worship is in everything that we do. True worshipers worship in everything that they do. But what makes a true worshiper is my entire life being open to God. That's what makes me a true worshiper. My entire life being open to God and me trying to live so that he gets the glory. Amen? Amen. Let's move on. So, so the when and the where. We are that the when and the where. When does a true worshiper worship? Where does a true worshiper worship? When does a true worshiper worship? Anybody got an idea when a true worshiper worships? Anytime and all the time. A true worshiper worships anytime and all the time. Right? Where does the true worshiper worship? Anywhere and everywhere. Anywhere and everywhere. Our worship is in everything that we do. Right? Our worship is in everything that we do because we name the name of the Lord. Everything that we do is a reflection of Him. Right? This is what Colossians 3.17 says. Colossians 3.17 says, And whatever you do, whether in word or indeed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The New Living Translation of that verse says this, and whatever you do or say, do it as a representative. Whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through him. Everything that you do, everything that I do, because we name the name of the Lord, because we say we're believers, it reflects on to God. Everything, right? Everything that we do reflects on to God. So everything, we have to have the mindset that everything I do, I got to do it as an act of worship to the Lord. I'm telling you, when you do, when you do, when you try to do uh, everything that you do like that, you'll be more careful to not say things to people that you shouldn't be saying. I'm not saying you're going to be perfect, right? We're human. But we have an advocate with the Father. So when we do make a mistake or we do do something wrong, we can get it right. right? We can get it right immediately, right? We can get it right immediately and step right back in, right? So I'm not saying to beat anybody up. But I want us to understand. We want to do that. We do ourselves as everything that we're doing as unto the Lord. And it will, it will keep us mindful of what we say to people. It will keep us mindful how we treat people. It will even keep us. I always want to make sure it's practical. It also will keep you mindful of what you're saying to yourself. Right? You always keep your mind going how you're treating yourselves, right? You know how and the Lord brought this to me? Everything we do reflects onto him, just like everything your child does reflects onto you. Everything 
you we do reflects on to the Father, just like everything our child does reflects on to us, right? When, when we're in public, we tell when we tell the kids to go out, don't you act crazy, yeah. right? Why are you saying that? Because you know people go, if they act crazy, people are going to see them acting crazy and say, well, "What kind of parents they got?" Right? Well, it's the same thing with God. We have to understand it's the same thing with the Father. When we're acting in ways that we shouldn't, and, they, and people know that we say we're a Christian, they say, man, uh, you know, what will God they serve? You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing. All that we do is to be done in honor to the Father, right? Because all that we do is an act of worship. It's bigger than us raising our hands and singing songs here. It's the way that we live and carry ourselves, right? Yeah. This came to me the way I talk to my wife. <laughs> I'm trying to do better, right? It's an act of worship. The way that she talks to me. Yeah. Yo, okay, I thought it was going to be quick. Okay. okay. <laughs> the way I treat Anaya, worship, right? The way I treat you is worship to the Lord. Everything that we do as believers. The way that we treat homeless people. Now, you know, people have a tendency to look, to look down on, on homeless people. You don't know who that person is. You don't know what that person could have been. You don't know why that person is in a situation that they're in now. That person could be an angel. The scripture says that, right? That we entertain angels unaware. You don't know who a person is. It could be an angel, right? Treat, you mistreat the person and go on by some big turn. Come. You ever had a situation where, uh, I, I, I thought this happened to me, where there was a person there, right? And, and you go do whatever you do, you come back, that person is gone, or whatever. This in my mind, this is thinking. That could have been an angel. You don't know, right? So that, that, that's, that's supposed to keep in our mind that, you know, we want to treat everybody right all the time. Again, you might not, you may, might not make a mistake, right? But you can get it right. But keep, keep the mindset that everything that we do is working to the Lord, right? The way that you treat waitresses at a restaurant. I'm big on making sure I tip people right. You know, that's a, that's a, that's a, uh, 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 pet peeve of mine, right? I want to make sure that the waitress or waiter gets tipped right because I know they don't make a lot of money, right? That's an act of worship, making sure that, that, um, they're taken care of for their work, right? I tell the teachers I'm not going to put too much information out here, but when I do do it, that's, I can always tell. Lord, forgive me. I can always tell when I'm going to a Caucasian person or a black person. How can I tell? By the tip and, and the instructions. I can tell by the tip and the instructions. Just an example. This is my experience. This is my experience. So anybody watching, this is my experience. Yeah, right? Experience. <laughs> Just want to make it known. But I get a job, $12 or whatever, and it says, Leave my food at the door, right? I can tell I'm going to somebody that may be Caucasian. Most of the time, it's right. You not get a job, but two hours and seventy-five cents, and they want you to go in my look in my bag, make sure that everything is in there. Then I want you to hand it to me, knock on my door, ring the bell, wait till I come. A lot of times, the black person. Two hours and seventy-five tip, dollar tip, and you want me to jump through all of these hoops, right? I tell the team, I said, I love my people, but we got to be better at that. Because we want a whole bunch of but nothing. We do that at what restaurants. Work the, re work the waiter or the waitress, make them work their behind off, and then give them two dollars. We got to be better. But all I'm saying, and I'm going to get off of that, but all I'm saying is that even the way that we treat the waiter at the restaurant is an act of worship to the boss. Right? Because everybody should be compensated for what they do. Right? There's a scripture in the Bible that says, don't muzzle the ox. Don't muzzle the ox. That was the Old Testament. And Paul used it in the New Testament, which meant that if the ox is doing work, he should be able to eat while he's working. If the ox is doing the work while he's treading the field for you, he should be able to eat something. Yeah. Paul was saying that about the preachers in the New Testament. right? They were going around preaching. They were barely able to take care of themselves. He was saying, if we're going around preaching the word of the Lord to you, at least we should be able to eat from it, right? What I'm saying is that the people who, that we, who do work for us, 
they should each be able to take care of themselves, right? If they're busting their behind, they should be compensated correctly. It's an act of worship to the Lord. Everything that we do. Scripture says this, let your light shine before men. Why? Why did he say let your light shine? He says so that people can see it and glorify your Father in heaven. Yes. Everything that we do reflects onto God. Everything that we do is an act of worship to the Father, right? Everything that we do, again, is deeper than raising our hands, right? We have to keep our heart raised. Yeah. Mm. It's deeper than raising our hands. We have to keep our heart raised yeah. to the Father, right? Now, when we get to our key verse, we want to say, we want to see that Jesus tells the Samaritan woman that the time is coming and now is here when true worshipers worship the Father in spirit and in truth. He says it's not on this mountain or that mountain, meaning that it's not a certain place that we worship, but it's in spirit and in truth. That means it is in everything that we do, right? If only we could let that sink in, that everything we do is worshiping the Father. If, if we could let that, that, think, that, that sink in, then I think, as I said, we would be more cautious. We would be more careful. Right? About how we carry ourselves, about what we do. Our mindset, I believe, would be, Father, I want to honor you, so help me honor them. Help me honor you. I want to honor you, so help me honor them. Right? Help me honor those I interact with. Right? That mindset will keep us from taking a joke too far. You know, you know what Scripture Paul said, don't do any coarse joking. He didn't say that you can't joke, but there's a point where you can take a joke too far. Right? So if we keep our mindset of, in a place of worship, that everything we're doing is act of worship to God, to God, it will keep us from going too far, right? Mm -hmm. if, if we keep that mindset, it will keep us from having, you know, we have a disagreement, it will keep us from going too far. You know you can have a disagreement and be all, be all good, right? Mm -hmm. But then there's a certain point where you can take a disagreement too far. When you start hitting below the belt, trying to hurt. You don't want to go there, right? It's okay to have a disagreement, but try to uh, uh, rectify it. Don't try to hurt. Right? So keep yourself in a mindset of worship. Keeping ourselves in a mindset of worship will keep us from taking a look too far. I was having a conversation. I'm going to just move to this real quick. Me and the guys was talking at work the other, on Friday about when you're at the gym. Right? And the ladies, y'all can say this too. So we ain't the only one that got eyes. God gave all of us eyes. Right? And He gave us eyes so that we can see. Right? He gave us eyes so that we can see and look. You can't help what you see, but you can help what you look at, right? You can't help what you see, but you can help what you stare at. So I was talking to the guys at the gym, I'm like, man, why does it seem to me like every time I'm working out somewhere, some female with church, church way up here, Right? Good dad said, yeah. <laughs> right? Stomach showing, you want to come near me. I, I saw you over there, but I purposely came over here. Because I'm not trying to look at you, but it always seemed like they try to make their way over to you. Right? And then I was at the I was at the gym one time where this lady actually reported some guys for looking at her. I said, if anybody knew what you had on when you left the house, it was you. Yeah. But you purposely put that on to come to the gym for nobody to look at you? I don't think so. You want somebody to look at you. Mm -hmm. If not, you, you can work out in sweatpants so and a big t-shirt. I, I forgot my uh, gym clothes the other day and had to work out in my work clothes. I got it done. Worked it out. All I'm saying is, we got to keep ourselves in a mindset of worship because it keeps me from looking at something that I shouldn't be looking at, right? You can't help what you see, but I can say I, I can help what I look at, right? Yeah. That's why I'm just being the guy I'm talking about. But it just, just, just keep yourself in a mindset of worship. Ladies, too, that you don't look at something too long, right? Mother at the church, you say, well, you look long, you look long, you look wrong. <laughs> but I'm just saying. Everything that we do, we keep ourselves in the mindset of, mindset of worship, it will keep us from taking things too far. Amen? So I'm going to switch it up right here. I'm going to move to the why of worship, but I'm going to make why last. 
right? We're going to, we're going to transition to how. How to worship words worship and how it works for them, right? Because I think we pretty much touched on it. True worship is what? Presenting yourself, offering yourself, right? Giving yourself all that I am, all that I do is done to you, oh God. Right? That, that, that's how we truly worship. No pretense, right? No making stuff up, but living, right? That's true worship. That's why Romans 12 and 1 tells us to be a living sacrifice, right? Sacrifices in the Old Testament were what? They were dead. They were, they were killed. But God says, God says he wasn't even pleased with those sacrifices. It's God wants a living sacrifice. He always wants a living sacrifice. He wants something that honors him yeah. in the way that they live. Right? That's what God is pleased with. So, so how does worshiping God work for us? Worship, it, worship is to God, but worship works for us. Worship is to God, but worship works for us. You heard me say this before, and I said it again. As we begin, worship we adjust our focus, right? Problems come and we focus on them; they magnify. Situations come and we focus on them; they magnify. But worship corrects our sight. Worship puts God in His right place, above both problem and situation. Right? The Scripture says that we declare this: Now unto Him who is able to keep me from falling. When we worship, we see that God is able to keep us from falling. Right? The rest of that scripture says this. And that not only is he able to keep us from falling, but he's also able to present us yes. faultless before his presence with great glory. When we worship, we see that God is able to keep us from falling and to keep us through everything. That is not us who keeps ourselves, but it's him who keeps us and yes. presents us before yes. his throne with exceeding yes. joy. Come on. The rest of the scripture says, then you declare to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. That's what worship does. It makes us able to see that God can keep me from falling. Yes. That I don't have to keep myself. When I pray in the morning, I say, Father, I don't want to sin today. I don't want to sin against you, so help me not to sin. Right? That's not, that doesn't mean that I'm not going to sin, but I don't want to sin. Not against him. So I asked him to help me not to sin. Because I want to glorify him with my life. Right? The Lord gave me this also while I was preparing this message. He said, worship is like getting your pupils dilated. Anybody ever had their pupils dilated? Everybody in the house, well, y'all don't wear glasses. Everybody in the house wears glasses or supposed to wear glasses. They don't, she doesn't wear her glasses like she's supposed to. Right? And now you're just at <laughs> But you're supposed to wear your glasses, right? So when we go to the eye doctor for a yearly visit, they dilate our pupils, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the, di the pupil dilation process, the, the doctor puts this, this yellow liquid in your eyes. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's called tropamid, tropamid. He puts this yellow liquid in your eyes, and what this yellow liquid does is enlarge your pupils. Mm -hmm. Right? Dilation means to enlarge. It opens up your pupil. It makes your pupil big, right? The little black thing in your eye, uh, you can't you can't see it because it makes your eye blurry. But what it does is I seen a picture of it. It opens up real big, right? So it's not this little black circle in your eye once it's dilated. It becomes a big black circle, right? Yeah. And what it does is it allows the doc it allows allows the doctor to look into your eye, and he can see if there's any potential cataracts, any potential any potential eye diseases or anything uh, that 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 could be. Uh, happening in your eye that you can see if your pupil was closed, right? Essentially, what dilating your pupil does is let more light into your eyes. It's like, um, it's like, it's almost like when uh, a door is closed on a dark room, right? You open the door, light comes in. That's what dilating your pupil does. The guy said to me, worship is, is like dilating your pupils. When you worship me, it lets more light into you. You're able to see that this problem is not the end for you, right? When you worship, you're able to see that this situation is not the end for you. When you worship me, you're able to see that I'm still able to do. It puts us in correct perspective. He said it lets more light in so that you're able to see that I can fix yeah. the situation. You're able to see that I'm the great physician that we talked about earlier. And I can rectify, I can detect, uh, detect 
or diagnose any problem that may be. That's what worship does. It opens us up. It lets light in, right? The scripture calls it illumination by the Holy Spirit. When you're able, you're being enlightened by God and what he's able to do that what the other people can't see. There are people who face problems that think it's the end of the world. But when you're a worshiper of God, and you know that he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you ask, think, or imagine, you realize it's not the end for me. Amen? So worship is like dilating our pupils, right? We were opened up and able to see that God is able to keep me. Worship shows us, it reminds us that God reigns in our lives, right? Worship refocuses our thinking, refocuses our feelings, right? I can always say, we have feelings for what reason? For us to be able to express how we feel, but not to be led by them. Worship redirects those things, corrects our feelings, right? You might feel like it's over. Worship says, no, it's not, right? Worship reveals, this is what worship does. When you worship God, it reveals what you truly believe. There are believers who say, I know that God is with me and for me. When situations come, they don't act like God is with them and for them. But when you worship, it shows you, I really believe that God is with me and for me. Yes. I, I am convinced that God is with me and for me. Doesn't mean that everything is perfect, but I know he is with me and for me. That's what worship does. It, it shows us, it reveals to us what we really believe. Right? Worship reinforces the truth that we know about God and about ourselves. That's what worship does. It reinforces the truth that you know about God. He's not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of a man that he should repent. Whatever he said to me, he's going to do. He's with me, for me, able to keep me through in, in everything that I, that I face. Right? That's what worship does. Worship is our route to fellowship with God. That's how we fellowship with him, through our worship, right? Now finally, why, why do we worship? Because it's what the Father wants. First and foremost, plain and simple. We worship because it's what the Father wants. And you ever thought about this? People, uh, when, when it's birthdays or uh, anniversaries or whatever, you want to give somebody a gift, right? You beat yourself up trying to find them a gift. Do you know the best gift to give somebody is something that they want? So I've gotten in the habit of asking me, what you want? Because I, if I get you what you want, I know you ain't sneaking behind my back, taking it back to, you know what I mean, asking for, you know, give me a receipt so I can take it back because it's not what you really want. If I give you what you really want, I know you'll be happy. Well, the Father tells us what he wants. He wants worship. We ain't got to beat ourselves up trying to figure out what we, what we can give God. You know, a lot of people do that. I want to please God. Let me pray 24 hours. <laughs> Let me pray 24 hours. That will please the Father. He would say, you know, we just got our 24, 21 day fast, right? But there are people who, who I, don't, I want to please God, I'm going to fast for 60 days. Well, Jesus only fast 40. They, they try to give God all of this stuff instead of giving him what he wants. Just give him what he wants. What, do you, what does he want? He wants our worship. He wants us to believe him. That's our faith. He wants us to love, to love and walk in love, right? Because we're, we're, we're being like him. He wants us to obey him, to do what he says. And he wants us to worship. Why not just give him, why not just give him those things? Right? He'll be pleased with those things. Amen? Think about this. We're almost done. God draws us to him by his goodness to save us. Right? Then God calls people to do a work for him. He calls people to do a work for him. Then God sends people out into the world to minister to God. We send the disciples out. Right? But when it comes to worship, what does God do? He himself seeks for those people. He himself, right? He draws us to him by his goodness. He calls people to do a work for him. He sends people to do a work. But when it comes to a worshiper for himself, he himself looks for that person. That's what our passage says. That God himself is seeking and searching for true worshipers. That speaks to how important our worship is to the Father. That he himself is looking for it, that's important to him, right? Our key passage, real quick. 
John 4, 23, 24. Again, this is what Jesus says there. But the hour is coming and it's down here with the true worship, but worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is what? Seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit and truth. Those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. God is looking for what? True worshipers, right? And those true worshipers are who? Those who worship Him in spirit and in truth. In our text, Jesus meets with a Samaritan woman, right? He meets with her at a well. He meets with her to tell her that the old way is going away and a new way is coming in him. Yeah. Right? Worship of the true and living God is no longer bound to ceremonial observances. Right? In the, in the Mosaic Law, there were things that they had to observe ceremonially. Right? But Jesus is saying, all of that is going away in me. Now what's coming is to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. It's no longer about a specific mountain. When you go back, I'm not going to go into the whole context of the conversation, but go back and read this. When, G, when the lady started talking to Jesus about worship, she said, y'all say it's on that mountain. Our people say it's on this mountain. Jesus said, listen, I'm trying to tell you anything about no mountain. Mm -hmm. The true worshipers worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Everywhere they go and everything that they do is for the truth. It's how the true worshipers worship. Then he said, it's no longer going to be about a race with specific people. She started talking about what, their, what, they, what, or what Jesus' people do, what the Jewish people. Yeah. He started talking about what her people do, who were the Samaritans. Jesus said, y'all worship what y'all don't know, don't, don't know. We worship what we know because salvation is from the Jews. What he was saying was, is, I'm the Messiah yeah. and I'm Jewish. Salvation is coming from the Jewish people. But even then, it's not about that because God does not just want the Jewish people. He wants yeah. all people. Yeah. Right? Everything that a true believer or a true worshiper does is worship to the Father, right? So it's not about a specific place, or it's not about a specific time, it's not about specific people, it's all about God. Yes. Amen? He said, now it's going to be about your mind. Yes. What you know about God. That's what true worshipers are. What you know to be true about God. He said, it's also going to be about your heart. Who resides in your heart? That's what makes a true worshiper. Now, to, to, to really understand how amazing this passage is, you have to understand the cultural implications of the time. Jews and Samaritans didn't get along, right? Jews hated Samaritans, and, had, and Samaritans hated Jews, right? Jews considered Samaritans to be half-breeds and false worshipers. Jesus was a Jew. This lady was a Samaritan. But Jesus told his disciples that he needed to go to Samaria to meet this lady. This shows what Jesus was doing. He was seeking true worship, seeking a true worshiper and beginning, ch changing her life to make her a true worshiper. See, he knew, if you go back and read this passage, he knew everything that was wrong in her life, like he knows everything that's wrong in ours. But it wasn't about that. He was seeking a true worshiper. What he knew about her was that even though she had all of this stuff going on in her life, her heart was desiring God. Part number two, uh, another cause of implication is a, Jew, a respectable Jewish man would never associate with a Samaritan, let alone a Samaritan woman, right? Remember, in the story, when you go back and read, you'll see that when the disciples came back, he sent them in town to get food. When they came back, they saw him talking to her, to her and they were marveled. They, they, they marveled. They were surprised. They were, they, were, they were dumbfounded that he would be talking to a woman, let alone a Samaritan woman. Right? But that's, that shows us what he was seeking. Right? Number three, Jesus said to her, uh, uh, that, you know, go get your husband. He said, I don't have a husband. He said, I know you ain't got a husband right now. You got five. Right? He knew what was going on with her. But he still sought her out. He told him that he needed to go to Samaria. Right? This woman was considered in her culture to be a woman of questionable character. But Jesus needed to go there to see her. Because when she met with him, it was going to change her life. And then she was going to change other people's lives by her testimony. Right? Number four. According to the cultural and historical tradition of the time, women typically drew water in groups in the morning. It was often a social occasion where they talked amongst each other. But in the story, this woman drew water by herself at midday. Which meant that she was an outcast. She was coming at a time when nobody else would be there. But Jesus told his disciples that he needed to go to Samaria to meet this woman. Yes. Because although she was an outcast to her culture and her society, she was not an outcast to him. Yes. 
And he was going to change her life and yeah. other people's lives through, through this meeting with her. Yeah. Right? All of these implications that Jesus went to Samaria for this woman. What am I trying to get you to see? He sought her out. God is looking for what? True worshipers who were worshiping in spirit and truth. It wasn't about what was going on in her life. Yeah. It was about what God wanted to do in her life. Yes. All of those she had, all of these problems, her heart was desiring God. That's a picture of us. Yes. It don't mean that your life's going to be free of problems. But you got to have a heart yeah. that desiring God. That wants God to move in your life, to be glorified in your life. Yes. Amen? See, Jesus sought this woman out because God is looking for true worshipers. This is the thing. The Jewish people, the people of Israel, they trusted in the temple. They didn't trust in God. They trusted in their place of worship. Right? They thought the temple of God made them God's people. Right? They, they thought that as long as the temple was here, we can do whatever we want to do because as long as the temple here means that God is with us. God that allowed that temple to fall to show them that I'm not with you. It's not about a place. You got to worship me for real, right? That they, they believe that God wouldn't deal with them because their temple was there. They had an outward, out, an outward display yeah. of religion. The Bible calls it a form of worship, right? They, they practiced an outward religion, but they had no heart change. The difference between them and this woman is her life was outwardly a mess. But her heart, inside, was desiring God. Them, outwardly, they looked respectable. They looked like they were worshiping God. But they meant their heart was dirty and deceitful and full of mess. That was the, that's what the difference was. That's why Jesus went to Samaria to tell this woman that the Father is looking for true worshipers. She thought that she had no place with God because of the way her life was. But Jesus showed her it's not about what's going on in your life. You got to let God come into your heart. And then, then he can do something about your life. Yeah. Amen? The woman at the well represents all of us. Mm -hmm. Amen? The woman at the well represents all of us. I'm closing with this. She had been trying. You know why she had five relationships? Because she was trying to quench her yearning for God with people. Ain't that what we do? We try to fill a God-sized void with things. You can't, you can't fill your yearning for God with things and people. You've got to worship him and allow him to have his way in your life. Amen? This woman, she felt unacceptable and unwanted and unqualified to serve God. Don't we feel that way too? But it's only worshiping God with what, with what you know about him, right, that will show you who you really are in him. Right? She, she this woman, she was considered an outcast. She, she didn't fit in. She didn't meet societal standards. Don't we feel that way sometimes? Right? But in, in the flesh, God sought her out to tell her about true worship. What was he telling her? It's about letting God do what he wants to do in you. The true worshipers will worship God in spirit and in truth in everything that they do. See, God is telling us, and I'm closing with this, God is telling us to continue to worship because of what he wants, first and foremost. Because of, what he, because of what he wants and because of what he's seeking. But that's not it. He's telling us to continue in worship because of what it does for us. See, our God is not a selfish God. Right? He wants his glory, but he also cares about his people. Right? So he's telling us to worship because it's, a, it's about him giving his glory, giving his honor, giving his praise. It, it is what he wants, but it's also about what it does for us. He is telling us to continue in worship. Why? Because true worship corrects us. True worship aligns us with his will for our life. True worship helps us to see who he made us to be. Right? True worship helps me understand that God is in control of my life despite what things look like. Right? True worship helps me understand that God is with me and for me despite what's going on. Right? True worship helps me believe that God is working on me right now. He's not done with me. Yeah. So I can't be done with me. Right? That's what this is what true worship does. True worship helps me see that I don't have to hide any of my problems. This woman tried to hide. 
her problems. When you read what some scholars say, the reason that you know Jesus came to talk to her, and they say the reason she started talking about this mountain and that mountain, because she didn't want to talk about what was really going on in her life. Yeah. But when Jesus talked to her, he got right to the point. Yeah. He said, yes, see what's going on in your life. You don't have to hide what's going on in your life from God. Why, why would you? He already knows. And he cares. And he is the only one that can do something about it. So you don't have to hide from God. That's what you worship does. Say, God, you see everything. Yes. Have your way. Have your way in me. True worship must be seen. That I don't have to hide my problem with God. I can take every single one of them to him because he knows anyway. Right? True worship helps me see that God is enough for me. And that I am enough for God. This is what true worship does. Right? True worship helps me draw near to God and understand that God is near me. This is what true worship does. Amen? God is telling us, and I'm done. God is telling us here at House of Faith Church to continue in faith, love, and obedience because they are really what worship is. Right? Faith, love, and obedience is really the worship of God. Right? And then he's telling us to continue in worship because worship is what's going to take us through. Right? Worship is what's going to keep us in everything that this life brings. Worship keeps bringing you back to God. Amen? Yeah. When you read this story, the woman at the well's life was never the same after this interaction with Jesus. It changed her. And then through her, other people was changed. The story, we only see a glimpse of it, but it says she began to go testify of what Jesus did. She said, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. That's how we see it in the Bible. Yeah. But scholars say she continued to preach. She became an evangelist. Jesus changed her life, telling her about worship, and, she, and then she changed other people's lives. That's what it's about, really. Yeah. Right? That's really, that's, what, that's really what it's about. This woman's life, her life was never the change. Never the same. I'm sorry. Understand, God is making us, God is molding us, God is shaping us through our faith, through our love, through our obedience, and through our worship. Amen? Amen. And through our faith, love, obedience, and worship, he's going to impact other people. Yeah. And that's what we see in this story of the woman at the well. God wants our worship, but what he really wants is us to be changed and other people's lives to be changed. Amen? Amen. So, I'm done. With that, it has been my prayer that, that this series has blessed us. Yeah. I'm asking you to hide these yeah. things. Yeah. Uh, hide these things in your heart, right? As you pursue yeah. all that God has for you. Keep faith. Right? Keep the faith. Keep believing God. Keep trusting in God, right? Because you're going to reward your faith, right? Mm -hmm. Keep walking in love. Because love covers a multitude of sin, right? Love is what's going to help us win this world, right? Amen. Keep being obedient. Why? Because the word of the Lord is your life. What God is speaking to you, he is bringing you to the life he has for you. Right? And continue in worship. Why? Because worship of God puts God in his right place. It helps you to see that you're more than an overcomer. Right? That you're more than a conqueror. Right? That, that God can do anything except fail. Amen? So I pray that this series has blessed us. Let's continue to go with the flow. Let's continue in faith, love, obedience, and worship. Amen. As we begin to transition into our um, our, our uh, communion, I'm going to end with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the word of God. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I thank you that your word tells us that your word will not return to you, Lord, which means it has to do what it has to do. Yeah. So uh, we thank you, Father God, for encouraging our hearts, encouraging our faith, encouraging our love, encouraging, encouraging our obedience walk, and encouraging our worship walk. Yeah. So that we can be and do all that you called us to be and do in Jesus' name. I pray the same thing for anybody who's watching, that they've been encouraged, that they've been strengthened, and anybody who does not know Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, I pray that they place faith in him in Jesus' name. And Father God, we pray as we thank you, as we go into our time of communion, that you be glorified and be with us even in this. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We now go into our time of communion. The Apostle Paul said to the people of God in the Bible, he said, I'm telling you, I'm paraphrasing it, but I'm not going to the scripture. He said, I'm telling you what God told me. He said, on the night Jesus was betrayed, he had communion with his disciples. They came together. And he had bread and he had wine. 
Oh, you got you want another yes, one? No. You got one? Yeah. One second. <laughs> I don't know. We don't know what's been on this for you. Yeah. You might die. You might die. <laughs> you might die. Go on when you start. Go on start ticking and stuff now. Like, what's going on with you now? Nah. <laughs> start turning into a zombie. <laughs> nah. <laughs> But he said, he said, on the night before Jesus was betrayed, he was with his disciples, and they had communion. Yes. They had uh, wine, and they broke bread. And Jesus said, um, this that we're doing, I'm not going to do it again until we're all in the kingdom of God. We told the disciples. He said, the next time that we're going to have this communion is when all the believers come to the kingdom of God. He said, but while you're on the earth, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. When he was telling this, Remember everything that I've done for you, everything I'm doing for you. Remember that I'm with you. Remember that I'm not going to leave you or forsake you. He said, remember everything I'm telling you. What he's saying to us as we're taking this communion, we're supposed to remember everything that he told them he's telling us, that he's with us, that he's for us, that he won't leave us or forsake us, that we can make it through, right? That he is our, prov our provider, that he is our savior, that he is our keeper, that he's everything. He were to remember everything that he was to them, he is to us. And not only to us, but to every believer. We want to make this practical and we want to make this realistic. As we take this, let your mind understand and remember the fact that he is with you and for you. Let's make it real. Let's make it practical, right? But as we take this, remember that his body was broken for us. So as he ripped the cracker, the body was broken for you. It was broken, his body was broken for me. It was broken for all of us so I can be reinstated and made right with God. Amen? So as you eat this, remind yourself of that. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And then as we drink this grape juice, remind yourself that the blood of Jesus was shed for you. Right? It was shared for you and for every believer. We're going to make it personal. It was shared for you. Yeah. Amen. People often say, I heard, I heard it said before, that if it was just me, he would have died for me. Right? If it was just me, he would have died for me. But he died for every believer, uh, 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 past, present, and future. Think about how good he is. He died for people who did not yet believe him. Right? You can drink it. I'm just talking. Let's drink it. Thank you, Lord. But he died. He died for people that did not yet believe him. Think about that. He died for people who, who, who he knew wasn't going to believe him. But he, but he still died so that, that they would have a chance. That's how good our God is. Amen? So today we make it practical. He did it for us. Yeah. He did it for me, he did it for you and every believer. That's what we want to remember. Amen? Amen. So Father, we just thank you for this time of communion. Thank you. Uh, we do it in remembrance of Jesus and all that he's done for us. So Lord, we just thank you for this time of, of worship and time of fellowship amongst each other um, as we begin to transition from this time of, 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 of communion into our time of giving. Lord, continue to be glorified now and through the remainder of our service. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to turn it over to Mr. Tina. Right. Uh, she's going Amen. to tell us about uh, things that are coming up and also our giving. Amen? Amen. 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 Everybody feeling now? Y'all straight now? We're ready to walk. Right? We're going to flow in it. we in the flow. Yeah. So as I was sitting there, y'all know I'm going to come up with something. That reminds me of George Jefferson. Y'all know how he walked. He was like this. That, that's why I feel like that's the attitude we should have. We walk in the flow, and you know, that if, if that was a dictionary, in the dictionary see that word of walking and flowing, and him having faith, people to love, obedience, and worshiping in him. I'm like, I just like, like you're just right now. You can't tell me nothing. Not gonna hold me back because I know who I serve. Amen. So let's have that attitude, that spirit of nothing, no one, nothing can stop us, right? But this will be all the way up. What? Then you pray. Um, and even with that being said, it's part of the B E L I V E R J C community. Let's continue to flow. That was walking faith, 
walk in love, walk in obedience, and walk in worship. So it's for his glory that we do everything that we do say. It all is being recorded. As I say all the time, we may be recorded right now. You see it right here. You go back and play, rewind, fast forward, all these things. But the things that we're doing right now in the world, we can't probably go back, fast forward, and try to you know, rewind it, whatever. We just got to continue just walking and just walk it. Live it out right now. Play it out. And let it be the best. The best play that you give us to the Lord. Amen. That we will do the best service so that we can win eternity with the Father. And it will be in the book of Lands of Life. Amen. So as we're preparing our hearts for our giving, at this time we're going to give a person. We have envelopes here we can get to. Deacon Teray, Deacon Ms. Takesha, and uh, Deacon in the back, Deacon Robinson. You are welcome to give them to give a person. And if you want to give online, that would be the cash app. Dollar sign H H O F C D E. If you want to give online, it would be www.hhofcde.org. You would click on the giving button. If you want to give by mail, that would be the Household of Faith Church, P.O. Box number 9804, Wilmington, Delaware, 19809. Amen. And then these are words that we will say back into the Lord as we are in worship. Amen. Of giving. We're giving this declaration unto him. We will say these words unto him. We're saying, because I am a giver, the windows of heaven are open to me. And God rebukes the devourer for my sin. I am blessed financially and receive a blessing that I cannot contain. I do not worry about lack, knowing God supplies all my needs, richly and abundantly. Therefore, I'm able to sow freely and live with you. I choose to sow cheerfully, generously, and bountifully, knowing I will reap bountifully. I have an abundance, every favor, and earthly blessing. All my needs are met and abound with every good work. Lord, I give you the very best of all my increase in accordance with your word. I believe you, Lord, will honor your word. My new season to reap is connected to my seed time, solely in connection with my seed in obedience. I ask the Lord to harvest for. Amen. Jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, perks and benefits, sales and commissions, scholarships and grants, homes and lands, favorable settlements, estates and inheritance, interest, income, money and riches, creator's works, creates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises. By the money that was lost and stored away. Debt has to be paid off and expenses decrease. The blessings of Abraham increase healings, miracles, signs and wonders, relationships restored, loved ones saved, divine wisdom and protection, visions and dreams, and visitations, harvest of souls, spiritual growth, and the glory of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for leading us in all our needs, that we may have more than enough to give it to the kingdom of God. Thank you for the fresh anointing, grace and mercy, for the ability to raise us to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. To God be the glory. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you. Thank you all who were able to give on today. And if you were not able to, I pray that I encourage you to say these words, amen, that you will be able to give, you'll be able to um, give whatever that you need, this is a job, you need an increase in the job, a new job, house, car, you want an unexpected uh, money coming to the, uh, to the uh, your bank account, Lord, you know all what it is that we need, so we're going to continue to confess these things and set it out of our mouth as we believe it, and even through our worship, God, as you help us, God, every day, all day, 24-7, God, that we give you the best worship, not only through our singing and through praises, but even through interacting with one another. So I actually follow the blessings right now, guys. We end this service on this afternoon, but as you got to go with us and we go out the door and go out to the world, I ask you got to be continue, Lord, to put on a whole arm of faith of you and God, and you continue, Lord, to do a work within us, and as we continue, Lord, to do a help of someone else, God, like God, will be changed, God, to help us to be like the woman at the well, God, to continue on to spread your gospel, your word, the good news, God, Lord, so that others will be changed forever and forever, and I ask you, God, to give us the strength, give us the wisdom, the understanding, and the knowledge, and the tools, God, I ask you, Holy Spirit, to operate in us as we continue, Lord, so that you activate in us, God. We give your name the glory, and as we give your name the honor and the praise, God, we forever praise your name to